In many ways, WWE has already changed forever. Because I was going to tell you at the start of 2020, well, World Wrestling Entertainment isn't going to have shows in front of fans anymore. And on top of that, they are going to host every single event from the Performance Center. You would have come up and you would have slapped me because I had a potty mouth and I was a dirty liar. And I would have offended your own mother who always taught you, you don't tell fibs. However, somehow what WWE has proven is that not only can you do this, but you can actually make money off it. And if that's blown your brain, don't worry, it blew my brain as well. So yeah, WWE is legitimately about to change forever. Why? Here's why. And I'm wearing a vest, but it's like 70 million degrees here. I'm already sweating my ass off and I'm, well, I'm clearly self-conscious, but let's get on with this. Let's get to the facts, which we can't argue with because they are facts and you can't argue with facts. Simply put, WWE in its recent financials posted its most profitable quarter in history. It saw consumer product sales go up, it saw WWE network sales go up, and the biggest one is that it saw the production of all its shows go down because again, they're just sitting around the performance center doing whatever the hell they please. And also don't forget that they're not running live, they're filming shows back to back, and all of this has produced such a saving that they were able to put those numbers up on the board. And of course, compare it to what they were doing before. You had Monday shows, you had Wednesday shows, you had Friday shows, you had house events. And now, of course, they haven't got to fly all wrestlers in from other parts of the country here, there and everywhere. They just bring them into one location. And once again, that's saving them a pretty penny. Now, at this point, we need to jump in our DeLorean and go back to a time where the world is normal and where WWE were running house shows. And Vince McMahon was very vocal in the fact that they were losing the company money and and that he was going to come up with some magic way to transform them and make them profitable again. As it turned out, he didn't need to do this because Planet Earth went and he fired a massive lightning bolt at us all and they were forced to cancel everything. The thing is, though, it didn't stop the problem and instead generated Scrooge McDuck levels of cash to the point you have to be thinking that all the powers that be are going, wait a minute, I think we just stumbled across something. Because they would have to be mad to ever go back to this idea. And when you think about it, that's all wrestling has ever been. If you go back to the 80s with Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate War, it was all about, oh, we're on the road for 722 days a year. And the Attitude had a crazy schedule. And even now in the modern day, some wrestlers wouldn't sign for WWE because of their schedule. The Young Bucks, Will Ospreay, they have all said in interviews time and time again, we ain't doing that because our home life and family means too much to us. If you're a business person though, and you're whole job is to watch the finances, you're not going to click your fingers and go, oh, let's just go back to what we were doing before. That would make you an absolute loon. Plus, you also have the problem that if you do do that, 100% of your fan base isn't want to go to live events right now because a large portion of them will be like, well, I don't feel too comfortable. We're in a global pandemic. People have been hitting me over the head saying, don't go, don't go. Now you want me to go? I feel very confused. And it's not like Raw and SmackDown won't go back out on the road because of course they will. But man, in their conference call even said, you know, the fans are so important to our product and we're going to get them back eventually and of course they will but outside of that you should not be doing anything the same so what does the future look like for wwe fewer events i would say absolutely in fact you can bet my ass but don't do it for real because then you'll have my ass and it will be a very confusing situation but unless vinnie mac is just paying lip service to this idea in the same call he finally said the words we've been waiting for and that was that one of the biggest things they now need to focus on is the building of new stars. Something that has been glaringly obvious since dinosaurs roaming the earth, of course, this isn't the first time that we've been here and statements like this have been said before. The difference being is that right now the raw rating is heading into territory that I don't think anybody can believe, especially management and officials. The third hour of Raw recently was the worst one in WWE history. I know you're gonna get mad at me, but I'm just the messenger. AEW in the 18 to 34 demo did better than that third hour of Raw. I can tell you for free, that was not meant to happen ever. In fact, when AEW did start, a lot of people in higher up positions were like, ha ha ha, like Zangief from Street Fighter, ha ha ha, they'll never get close to us. Well, now they're looking up your bum. What it means though, is that you can't just carry on regardless because you may even crater the promotion. Now that's me being hyperbolic, but look, something's got to change because if nothing changes, nothing changes. And as someone that has grown up on this idea that WWE has this grueling schedule, well, I finally think we've come to a place where that has to change. And this is how I kind of see the new template going. You get Monday Raw, of course, you get Friday SmackDown, you get NXT, you get one pay-per-view a month, but then within that four-week window, maybe you just get one live event? 
I think that's actually quite realistic. But really, it's this new stars concept that has to be jumped on. Look, I'm going to do it literally, even though it's going to make the camera gone blurry. That's how invested in I am on this. And as I say these words, we are about hours away from Grand Metalik of all people taking on AJ Styles for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, I do not believe that Grand Metalik should win that match. I think if you did want to do that, you need to build him up and say to everyone, oh, wow, look at this new up and comer. But the fact that they have now done this and the fact that they've just said these words, we've got to push it all together. Otherwise, I think we're all losing our damn minds. And really, we just have to try. That's it. We have to try. It's not going to work for everyone. But how the hell are you going to know if you don't give it a go? That even rhymes. But I mean, maybe Metalik is going to become the brand new Rey Mysterio. And you can go in the comments and go, well, that's not going to happen. But again, unless we attempt it, nobody can say for sure. This should all roll out into Raw, SmackDown and NXT too. No opening promos to start every single thing. And don't just go match backstage skip, match backstage skip, match backstage skip. Come up with some new ideas. Come up with a new structure. Just change everything and hit refresh. Change the game. Take the ball by the horns. Run naked through a field. Don't do that last one. But there's cliches and there's analogies and metaphors for reasons. And now is the time to look at them and figure out why they're there to begin. With. It's not like the WWE hasn't done this before. In the late 90s, they were the hottest and most exciting thing on television to the point they crossed over into the mainstream. And I understood that they borrowed from ECW. Well, the idea of borrowing hasn't gone away in 2020. Maybe you should start going and have a little loan. I can just not see any kind of scenario where we get out the other side of this and WWE just operates like WWE did in 2019. And now they have double reason not to do that because, again, they just made a shitload of cash. More cash than I'm ever going to make, maybe I'll rob them. And fans will always be the most important part of any single professional wrestling organization. You can't argue that. But when it comes to the day-to-day -day running, the business, the stuff that we don't ever really get to see properly, it's all out the window now. It should be thrown off a cliff or off a roof like Alistair Black and Rey Mysterio did at Money in the Bank. Poor Rey Mysterio too. What an awful year he's having. Got chucked off a roof and he lost an eye. It's probably time to retire. So it's got to change WWE and it's got to change forever. I know that's well too much, but I'm just trying to make my point all poetically. Look, I'm sweating now. I've got so riled up. Just don't do it to me again. Do you remember they said, you're the authority? And we weren't the authority. We were just like some crap on the street. Well, now I do want to be in control. And really, all I want is new stars. The other stuff's important too, but you know, I can kind of take or leave that. New stars, make it now. And while we are asking for things, let's hire back Rusev. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about all of this. Do you want house shows to come back? Would you go to house shows? Do you think that we should have this reduced schedule? And would that make you more excited? And also, who the hell should we be pushing? Who is the biggest guy to come along or girl to change everything around? Then make sure you like the video, share the video, hit that subscribe button, head over to whatculture.com, read yourself some articles, follow what culture on Twitter, whatculture, WWE, and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you for watching the Y series. One day I'm going to have serious head trauma, but that's how much I care about you. See you soon.